Welcome back. I've got an absolutely fantastic piece of apparatus to show you today. This is a Wimshurst machine and I'm going to show it to you working and I'm going to try my very best to explain to you how it works. So you might all be familiar with the Van de Graaff generator and uh, this is a piece of apparatus that comes from the same sort of area of physics, electrostatics. And the Wimshurst machine uh, was made by James Wimshurst in about 1880, that sort of time. And it's an electrostatic generator that uses electrostatic induction to generate huge charges on these Leyden jars and then it will throw really large sparks. So let's get it going. So all we have to do is open the spark gap up here and that's the bit you want to look at. I hope you can see on the camera uh, without me zooming in. And then I've got a handle that I'm going to crank on the back here and let's see if we can get some sparks to form. So I've got a bit of a close up of the spark gap here and I've got about a three centimetre gap. So let's see what happens now when I turn the wheel. Well, whilst doing that, I can actually uh, smell something as well, which is a bit strange. Uh, I can actually smell, I think it's ozone. So what's happening is the uh, spark is ionising oxygen in the air and that oxygen is rejoining to make um, O3 to make ozone. So I've opened up the spark gap now to five centimetres. Let's turn the handle and see if we can generate a voltage big enough to ionise air across that gap. There we go. Takes a little time uh, for the charge to build up, but once it's built up, um, it stores itself in the laden jars and then discharges across the gap when the voltage is high enough to ionize the air between those two balls on the top of the spark gap. So I've lowered the camera a bit now so you can see the spark gap slightly better against the black curtains. And let's give it a spin and see if we can get an arc to go across that spark gap. So it takes a while to build up the charge, but there we go. Now that is six centimetres, and we have to be a bit conservative about what voltage is needed to break down air, but should we say about 20,000 volts per centimetre? So we've currently got on this about 120,000 volts. OK, so now for the really tricky bit. Can I explain how this thing works? Well, let's start off with the uh, discs and the rotating mechanism and how that gets going. So uh, the first thing you need to know is the Wimshurst machine is made of two discs. And these two discs are made of an insulating material and they're separated by an air gap. Um, the next thing you need to know is that it's supported uh, at least the discs are supported on either side by bearings, but they rotate, when I turn the handle, in opposite directions. And the way that's achieved is on this side, uh, there's a pulley and a belt. And as I turn the handle, it turns this disc in the same way as I turn the handle. But the disc on the other side turns in the opposite direction. And this is really important uh, for explaining how it actually works. To get it to rotate in the opposite direction, um, there's a pulley on this side as well, but there's a twist in the belt and that twist in the belt makes sure the belt goes round the other way. So what have we got? We've got two insulated discs, so they're insulated by an air gaps, made of insulating material 
and driven in opposite directions when you turn the handle. Some of these have an electric motor, uh, but I much prefer the control you get with the handle. And it makes it clear to um, students that it isn't the electricity from the motor uh, that's somehow charging this up. It's the energy from the motor indeed, but in this case, it's getting um, its energy from me physically turning the handle. The next important bit to look at is how do we store the charge? Uh, we'll come to how the discs work in a minute. So we've got two Leyden jars here, or are they Leiden jars? I should know my mother was Dutch. And uh, basically they're a metal can inside another metal can and the two cans don't touch each other. So they're isolated by an air gap and they're a very early form of capacitor. The outsides of these metal cans are underneath the um, base of this, are connected together. And the insides of the metal cans connect to uh, these bars that go into a region called the collector. And there are two separate collectors um, on either side of the machine. And we'll explain in a minute how those collect the charge and charge up the Leiden jars. So you saw a spark flying earlier on, and that's caused by the Leyden jars, Leyden jars being fully charged up for that voltage. And uh, the tops of the Leyden jars are connected to these two separate balls. And these balls form a spark gap, um, a sort of another capacitance, I suppose, in parallel with these two that are in series. And when the voltage is high enough to ionize the air, you get a spark flying across the gap the capacitors discharge and the whole process starts again. It's interesting to point out that these are ball shaped, so uh, they're not very pointed. So the electric field on here isn't very uh, strong close to the ball. In other words, the field lines aren't very closely packed, which means the voltage has to build up, which is good news for big sparks. And it builds up and up and up until the electric field is strong enough to ionize the air. OK, so now for the tricky bit. Let's see if I can uh, explain this. And it's not that easy to explain, but it's not that difficult to understand, uh, which is an interesting way around with things. So remember, we've got the two discs that rotate in opposite directions and each of these discs is identical and it's covered with conducting foil little sectors. Now, these sectors are all insulated from each other and they will always be neutral when the uh, machine is sitting in the cupboard. And so if you turn the handle, uh, nothing happens. Um, you don't get any charge buildup. But what the machine relies upon is one of two things. Either you put a little bit of charge onto one of these sectors and that's enough to get it going. Or, which is more typical, there'll always be a tiny charge imbalance. There'll always be a little bit of charge maybe on one of these sectors. And if one of them is not completely neutral, when you turn the handle, the machine will start to work. So what I'm going to do now is explain how these sectors on the contra-rotating discs can uh, induce charge and induce more and more charge and charge up the Leiden jars. OK, so now for the really tricky bit, explaining how the charge builds up on the Leiden jars. So uh, the first thing is, imagine this sector here. OK, so this is on my side, um, this disc, which is on facing me. This uh, metal sector here, imagine that's slightly negative. And as you turn the discs, um, it will line up with a sector on your side, OK, on this disc. And if this one is negative, my side, the negative electrons will repel electrons in this piece of metal. Well, they've got nowhere to go because they're on an insulating disc. So they will be pushed out onto the outer face of this metal sector. So we've got charging by induction. But here's the clever bit. As soon as the disc turns, the charges will now move back to where they were and we're back on this sector, the one that's facing you, back to an insulated state. So what we need to look at now is what happens when one of these sectors touches this bar here and the charge flows off it. So you now understand a little bit about charging by induction. So let's see if we can actually build up some charge using these sectors. So this is slightly different. Look at the position of this sector that's facing me. 
Imagine that one is ever so slightly negative. So it's got electrons, excess of electrons on it. And as you turn the disc, we'll turn it this way, it lines up with this sector on this side facing you. Now, you'll also notice it's touching this brush here. If you think that the one on my side's negative will repel electrons towards you to the outer surface of the sector facing you, those electrons hit this bar and they will flow very rapidly down here to the sector that's at the bottom here and make that negative. In other words, they've extracted electrons from here and put them on that sector. And now what we need to do is get those electrons to the Leiden jar. But this is a good point to explain why we've got two Leiden jars on this system. So, negative sector on my side repels electrons on your side. Those electrons flow down the neutralizer bar and onto this metal sector here, leaving the one facing you up here positive. Now, as my disc turns, you'll notice that this positive sector continues in that direction and the one we made negative down here continues in this direction. So this positive sector is moving towards this brush here and the negative sector we made down at the bottom is moving towards this brush here. And that is going to help us explain how we charge the two Leiden jars. So this process of charging by induction carries on whilst we're rotating. And remember that this sector here is positive and the one that was here is negative. And as they're opposite each other, as they come up, they're going to touch these brushes here. And if this sector here is negative, the electrons will rush off down this bar and down and into this Leiden jar. And if this sector was positive, it will attract electrons from the Leiden jar and make this Leiden jar very positive. So we've now got a positive Leiden jar and a negative one and a spark gap. And that means we've got a voltage between the two, a strong electric field on the spark gap, and we just need to wait until the voltage is high enough for it to cause the air to ionize, break down, and for a spark to fly across the gap. So I don't know how well you can see the brushes here that touch the sectors and this big thick conductor that carries the charge down to this point and then we can connect up and let the charge flow down to the central can inside the Leiden jar on this side. So I hope that brief explanation made some sense to you. I'm sure there are people who've done it on uh, YouTube much better than me and do a much more in-depth explanation. But you get the general idea that this is a machine that uses charging by induction. And then as soon as you've got some charge induced on a surface, you whiz it away and conduct it off into a Leiden jar. And if you keep doing that again and again and again, you can build up more and more charge as the discs keep rotating. So to get this into a safe state to put away in the cupboard or um, to leave on the desk so the technician can pick it up um, is fairly simple. Um, you've got some levers here and these two levers connect the laden jars to the rest of the apparatus. So obviously you want to short all of that out. So I'm going to connect the two laden jars. Um, they're connected when you're running the machine normally. And then the spark gap, all I need to do is just to make sure that I narrow the spark gap, touch the two balls at the top, and now the machine is basically neutralized and safe to move around. So I hope you enjoyed that look at the Wimshurst machine and you feel you've got a little bit of a better understanding of how it works. I'll be making another video soon and I look forward to seeing you then.